My bun is so high it literally does not fit in the frame. It also looks like a poop emoji on my head. This is what I get for not washing my hair. Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Lisa Schwartz. If you are new here, hello, welcome. So very happy to have you. For those of you who have been here for a while, you might remember this format. I used to call it hump day extravaganza. Basically, I'm gonna answer your own personal questions, not questions about me because I'm so sick of me, but questions that you are dying to ask. Maybe you are afraid to ask anyone in real life. You're too shy about it. You're embarrassed about it. But here on my channel, anything goes and I will do my best to give you my advice from my own personal experience because I am coming to the fact that I am the mom on the internet and I have lived a life and um, I've made a lot of mistakes and I'm ready to share my experiences to help you out with yours. So I headed over to Twitter to ask you to ask me questions and uh, let's dive in and see what we get. Please note, I've not read any of these in advance, so I don't know what's going to come out of your mouth and I'm not sure what's gonna come out of mine, but we're all gonna do this together and hope for the best. And also hope we don't get flagged. Okay, Lisa Marie says, have you ever had to deal with mean girls? I'm the same age as you and ever since I was a kid, I find myself in a position of getting used, manipulated, and ostracized. I am switched on, but I'm a nice, empathetic person. I don't wanna get changed, but I don't wanna keep getting hurt. Lisa Marie, first of all, definitely do not change because being a nice, empathetic person is one of the most wonderful things you could possibly be. So I pray that you don't change. We need more people like you out there. But I understand if you are someone who is a people pleaser, not that you're that, but like usually that goes along with like that sort of category of person that I think I am, where you like want to make everyone happy and you are empathetic so you feel what other people feel and, um, you're kind of easy to you're easy to manipulate that you said it yourself i get it because you want to make everything and everybody happy but at some point you have to stop and you have to protect yourself from that if you didn't see my video from last week i talked about friendships and friendships that ultimately didn't serve me and why i i and why i and why i like kind of broke up with a friend. Um, and I think that might be something worth checking out and re-listening to because if even if these mean girls aren't like your close friends, you need to be able to separate yourself from that situation and surround yourself with people that are good and do make you feel good. So I'm sorry if this keeps happening to you and I'm sure as an adult it's frustrating because I feel like when you're a kid and when you're in school, this stuff like kind of happens to everyone, but uh, you know, after you graduate and you're out in the real world, you have more options of people to surround yourself with. And so if you do find that you keep surrounding yourself with these kind of people, I think maybe that's a good observation to have and be like, okay, well, why do I keep choosing these kind of people and maybe trying to divert your attention to someone that you wouldn't normally hang out with because maybe the people you normally are hanging out with is that certain type that's taking advantage of you. Is this making any sense? I started off on a really complicated question. I don't really have the answer other than you need to protect yourself and if someone isn't making you feel good, move on and find someone that does and just know it's not your fault it's not your fault that those people are mean people it just will continue to be your fault if you don't change your patterns and habits of sticking it out with those people it's time to move on you're wonderful you and I can be friends and uh, did that help Alejandra Alvarez says hey Lisa my boyfriend of eight years wants to move closer to his mom and I don't want to move all the way across the state and be away from my family and we're having a hard time teaching a compromise any ideas PS love all your content you're so funny <laughs> just had to read that part out loud um wow a relationship for eight years what's that like that's like literally the one thing i don't feel like i've experienced um but i have experienced compromise and relationships are all about compromise so before you get in one please know that um <laughs> i feel like everyone's like i want to be in a relationship so bad and they get in one and it's like wonderful but you're like oh that's right i like don't get to do everything my way um this is tough because i know like i always want to live close to my family and we're talking like I want to live like on top of my family um so the thought of moving away from them is super scary but on the flip side I understand why your boyfriend wants to move towards his 
I don't know. I don't I don't know what to tell you because you don't want to deny him, but you also don't want to deny your happiness. My question to you is you have been together for eight years, so it sounds like this is like legit. Like are you guys planning on just like being together forever and like if you are planning on being together forever then you really do need to figure out a way to make this work um or is this just one of those relationships that's convenient because you've been together for so long and maybe are there bigger issues on hand here that are worth examining before you like uproot your life does that make sense um I don't know the compromise and I don't know the distance but I definitely think having an open conversation and not coming at it with like I'm right or like I have to win really like looking at your options that's one thing I really like about my boyfriend is that we're able to sort of like have a conversation instead of a fight about things and being able to like put all the options on the table and kind of take the emotions out for the moment until you can kind of settle on it's like a, it's like a business relationship honestly which sounds like so not sexy but like when it comes to these big life things you really do need to like sit down at the table and have a proper conversation about it so i don't know keep me updated on what ends up happening but i definitely would List your priorities and um, go from there. I'm. This is bad. Like this. These are hard hitting questions. I feel like maybe next time I have to ask you guys the questions. I don't know. Let's move on. All right. Katie says, "What's your advice for starting up a conversation with someone you like but aren't close with? Like, I feel like it'd be weird to just message him out of the blue saying hi without having a reason to talk to him. I don't know. Um. Oh, oh I love young love." Um, yeah, it's so weird because like when I was in high school, I'm assuming you're in high school or maybe college, um, or maybe even elementary school. I don't know. When I was back in the day, like we didn't have like social media to use. So I feel like it makes it harder now, but also easier because there's so many options. But, um, definitely I feel like no conversation should just start with like a hi like a hi and that's it because that's like kind of intensely weird um you know like when you're on a dating app and someone just like messages you hi you're like hi this is very weird um so don't put that stress on the other person of starting the conversation if you just start with hi because then they're gonna have to either write hi back or hi and continue the conversation but i feel like one you're a brave ass woman if you're gonna like start the conversation i think that's rad and if you like this person and you want to talk to them just like go for it but i definitely would have like something to say not that you need to like find an excuse but maybe find an excuse <laughs> yeah i mean like if you have a class in common or if you see something on their profile or a picture that they posted that you liked i would just like find something that like you can kind of hook on and have a conversation about you know what i mean so like when i was on online dating this is the only thing i can like kind of compare it to instead of just being like hi i would like find something in their profile that i found charming or i had a question about and then like go from there so i don't know i'm sure like he's gonna be stoked that you reach out because you seem cool so yeah I would just be confident and dive into a conversation, ask a question. People love to be asked questions about themselves and uh, see where it goes. Let me know. Was this better advice than the last one? Becca says, I'm loving your new videos and I love your new relationship. Keep doing what you love. Don't listen to others. Thank you. I needed that today. You guys, I am all about spreading love here on this channel. I know my channel has evolved and it's had ups and downs over the years youtube is hard and life is hard and obviously that's being reflected onto my channel but i am proud of my channel and i'm excited if you didn't see my video i think it was the last video i posted where i did a try on haul that literally like gave me a mental breakdown I really ask you to watch it. One, I worked with a sponsor that I really, really liked and I'm trying to get the video to a certain amount of views so that I can work with them again. So if you can do me a favor, I'm gonna leave the link below. But also like I tried on a bunch of clothes and it went really bad and I feel like for the most of the videos that I've seen online of people doing that, they either won't show it or they gl glamorify it, glamorify it, glorify it. And I was just like happy to have that experience on camera and the comments were so wonderful. The views like weren't as good as usual, but the people that were watching you guys are amazing you guys are an amazing community and I'm sorry I'm going on a tangent but I just want you to know that like 
I really like you guys. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but like, I feel like there's a lot of people here that have been on my channel forever and they're only here for certain reasons and they're angry because they're not getting what they want. But there's a whole like slew of you that I genuinely feel like I would be friends with outside of this if the opportunity were to ever rise. It's just like powerful, mindful women and there's a few men out there who are just experiencing things the way I'm experiencing them. I, and I just want you to know that I see you and I'm genuinely touched by you and um, inspired by you. And so I appreciate you. So yeah, if you can click on that video, I feel like that's what I'm ultimately really about. And if you like that, then stick around. And if you don't, totally cool. But if you do, and you have friends who you think would too, pass it along to them. I'm just trying to build kind of a new community here on my channel full of you guys who are cool because there was a moment where I just didn't want to do this anymore. And I think a lot of it was because I was reading the not nice comments and I'm like, you know what? No, I don't care if my views aren't as high as they were before. All I care about is that the people that are watching are getting something from this and that um, what they're getting is something positive and I'm just going to keep doing me. So there you go. Sorry about the tangent and sorry about my little baby wispy hairs that I can't ever get a control of. <laughs> All right, moving on. Dennis says, how do I get back into dating after being single for two years and going on horrible dates in the past? First of all, Dennis, hey, love seeing a guy, a nice guy. Dennis, let me tell you, there are a lot of nice women in the comment section below that we could probably set you up with. <laughs> Where do you live? What's your age? Let's make this happen. That would be amazing, actually. Dennis, hit me up. I wanna like set Dennis up with someone. Oh my God, I love that. Um, okay, dating is so hard. I do actually think I'm an expert when it comes to dating because I have had so many crazy dating experiences, so many good ones, and some very terrible ones. Um, I think being single for two years is gonna work in your benefit. I know it's hard to like jump back in. It's like when you stop exercising, it's so hard to like get back to exercising. But if you are ready, which obviously it seems like you're ready to do it, like, just come at it knowing that you are two years more mature now and I'm assuming you know who you are and what you're looking for. And I think that there's power in that and if you know that and you are confident, going to dates isn't as terrible because you're like, you know what? There's gonna be some bad ones and there's gonna be some good ones but ultimately I know what journey I'm on and I know what the end goal is so I'm just gonna go through this. I'm not gonna take anything personally and when I finally meet the person that like it feels right, then I win. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like we have to switch our mentality about dating because either you're just like convinced everyone sucks or every time you go on a date, you're like, this could be the person and it's like too much pressure. I think if you just go in with a willingness to like meet and talk to people um, and stop putting so much pressure on it, um, it will come more naturally too. Does that make sense, Dennis? Dennis, Dennis, Dennis. Literally check out the ladies below. <laughs> and to become a dating service. If my views keep going down, I might have to. Okay, I'm gonna do one more, but again, make sure you follow me on Twitter and send your questions there. And if you wanna see more of these, let me know in the comments below. I will do this weekly if you guys are down. I think it's fun and I think you guys are great. Okay, a lazy fan girl wants to know, how do I know if I'm being clingy or just looking for a regular amount of attention from my friends? If you think that you're being too clingy, then you probably are being too clingy. Like if you have that intuition, chances are you probably are. Listen, friendships are supposed to be even balance and it's not supposed to be something that you're constantly questioning. It's like a relationship, you know what I mean? It's just kind of supposed to flow naturally. Um, so if it doesn't feel like it is and you're constantly questioning, like am I texting them too much or why aren't they texting me back? Am I asking them to hang out too much? Why aren't they hanging out with me? Then I think it's time to like step back and either look inward and be like, okay, am I being like overbearing or are they not really reciprocating this friendship? Either way, it's probably not a good friendship. A good friendship should be easy. You should text them and they should text you back. Or if you text them and you don't hear back from them, you wait a little bit, you text them again, and then they text you apologizing for missing that first text. You know, stuff like that where it feels natural. If it's not feeling natural and any part of it is feeling forced and stressful, then move on. This is not the friendship for you, whether it's your your fault or not. You know what I'm saying? 
I think that's like the overall arcing theme of relationships. If it doesn't flow naturally, it's not right for you, right? Some things are work, like obviously in a relationship and in friendships, you're gonna like butt heads at some point and you're gonna have to like work through it. But if generally speaking, the relationship is not feeling two-sided, evenly two-sided, um, and it's not feeling easy, then it's not for you. So maybe you are being too clingy and maybe you need to look at that and maybe it's a matter of being insecure that you're not feeling confident enough so you need someone to like text you back a million times, you know what I mean? If that's the case, then I think you need to figure out what about yourself you don't feel confident in um, because the minute you feel secure and happy with yourself, I promise you the relationships around you are going to be so much better. I have to go now because my feet are so asleep. Like, it's to the point where I'm so uncomfortable and I'm trying to hold it together so I can finish this video. But, um, oh. well, this was delightful. I hope that you guys like this. I really like just sitting down and chatting with you guys and being normal with y'all. And I hope that you appreciate that too. And thanks for letting me rant about everything and anything. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss these videos. Let me know if you want to see more of them in the links below. Tweet me at little Schwartzy so I don't miss your questions for next time. Do me a favor, check out my video from last week. I'll link it in the description below. And guys, have a beautiful, wonderful day. I am here, I see you, I support you, I love you, and I'm glad you are part of my little community. I'll see you next time. Okay, um, I'm having flashbacks to when I used to cry in dressing rooms in high school and junior high trying on clothes because nothing ever fit um i'm hesitant to show you this outfit i can't zip it um and um i apologize in advance for my camel toe